Hey, Danny, this was awesome. We actually have a we have a, a countdown now here on China Direct. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, How are you doing, buddy? Very cool. I'm great, Mirko. How are you? Not so bad. I've heard we do a quick one today on China CD space. A couple of things are happening. Obviously, you're always the guy sort of in the midst of it all and knowing knowing the details. So I thought we're just going to share a little bit and um, and show people what's what's going on in China there in the EV space. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Huh? I mean, this market is so so fast and dynamic and always uh, has a big impact on the rest of the world. Huh? So, um, yeah, you, you, you shared this uh, data um, yesterday, Mirko. It's, uh, it's quite interesting. I mean, it's only uh, it's only one week in early June um, but uh, of registration, but it shows kind of uh, um, two amazing things, especially for the startup Lee Auto. And this is somehow really, uh, it becomes the black horse out of China right now. Uh, and in the, in the first few days of June, uh, they already have more than 10,000 registrations. So getting quite close to the three German brands. That's and amazing. Yeah. It's just, just a quick question that I mean, when I look at the data, I think we haven't chatted about this yet, but when you look at Mercedes-Benz and Audi and BMW, do you have an idea roughly how much of that is still good old um, internal combustion engine vis-a-vis -vis EVs or let's say NEVs, con including the plug-in hybrids? I, I don't have the exact data. It's at least 80%. I would guess more than 90%. Uh, PF, I wow. wouldn't really count, right? I mean, PF is just, just uh, something in the middle. Um, so they are heavily reliant still on the gasoline and, and they're trying also to launch their, their electric models. But um, if we would take out the gasoline cars and show this chart, then they would be far behind the auto, right? So, so that's for sure. So it's amazing. Yeah. And you see this uh, CEO of, of the auto, Li Xiang, he, um, he was uh, interviewed recently and, and he uh, announced uh, that they are confident to beat the German luxury brands in 2025. Of course, you know, I mean, we are, we're used to lofty announcements of lots of people, right? And most of them don't get <laughs> fulfilled. But this is a very low key guy. Uh, I mean, what he says, he means. And this is just uh, outstanding. Uh, I mean, what how they have been performing, especially against their peers, Neo and Xiaopong in, in China. And especially yeah, because we have um, have limited range of products, right? Yeah, so it's actually when you, let's let's quickly go go through the numbers here um, as we've prepared them for Neo, um, Xiaopeng, and also uh, Li Auto because you know the main numbers haven't been so great for for Neo here was just six thousand one hundred, uh, Xiaopeng at like seven thousand five hundred. And yeah. here already you can see the absolute sort of yeah. outperformance. And then, and I was just really sort of wondering because you just talked about um, Li Xiang, you know, here we've got the three of them. Maybe, maybe you can quickly introduce them because I, I guess you even actually know them uh, personally. Yeah, yeah, Michael, can you just jump back to uh, two pages? Yeah. I, was, I just want to mention this because this is really uh, both Neo and Xiaopong is the same trend. Uh, if you go to the, yeah, exactly. So um, they're since February, they're de in decline and also they're uh, below previous year. So, um, yeah, especially yeah, Xiaopong also. So that's quite uh, alarming. And I think most people are aware that Tesla started a bloody price war in China right uh, early this year so they cut prices by ten thousand us dollar and this has put a lot of pressure especially on these startups huh? because if you don't follow the pricing adjustment then uh, you're not competitive anymore and but all of those players they don't have big margins yet so they don't have the room to to, to cut down yeah so yeah. And of course it's quite alarming uh, that, that that those guys are uh, as a startup right that they, they they're not continue to grow anymore yeah? that they fall behind the previous year yeah? and mm. and then this page of Lisha, and this is just absolutely stunning right because yeah uh, both Nico and and uh, and Xiaopong, they have launched already a couple of models. Huh? They have already three or more models in the market. Li Xiang basically only has one car. I mean, to be exact, I mean, it's one car. And now uh, this year, they basically launched three variants of the of the same car, of a similar car. And they go up to 28,000 cars per month. That's absolutely stunning, huh? I, I have to say. <laughs> and, um, yeah, if you look at these uh, three guys, um, I had the pleasure to, to meet all of them before, uh, personally. It's very interesting. All of them are, are internet entrepreneurs, right? And became uh, 
the Chinese Elon Musk's, you can say, and uh, the, the, the guy on the light side, he worked with Alibaba many years for Xiaopong, and then he founded Xiaopong. I think he put in close to a billion of his own money, which he had earned in, in Alibaba before. And uh, yeah, he's a very charismatic entrepreneur, and, and, and their in-car entertainment is great. The guy in the middle is uh, William Lee, so he is... Um, uh, uh, he is uh, the founder of uh, Chichurjitya Auto Home, yeah, which was a very uh, successful uh, listed company, Nasdaq, early already. He also made money with that. So this is kind of a web page where they uh, buy the, the car leads from NIO. And then the right side, this is the founder of Lee Auto. It's his own name. Yeah? So he's called Lee Xiang. And uh, he was really... Um, probably most low-key. I still remember he sat in my office when I was at Infinity 10 years ago. And we were talking for, for two hours about the, the deep product details of Infinity. I mean, I've never met a guy who takes care about so much details of the products, right? So every small detail. And this is a guy who firmly believes um, you just need to listen to the customer, study the customer, listen to their voice, and do exactly what they want, right? And uh, so these three are, know each other, but they're quite different, and their companies are also performing quite different. Uh, and I think uh, Neo in, in, in the middle, they did a great job on customer experience and satisfaction. Uh, Lee Xiang on the right side probably is a genius on the product side. And he has done something I think is is amazing yeah, because he, he, he did his first car with an incredible small amount of money. So I have heard that this is in the range of only two to 300 million. Uh, the total ticket was needed to develop their first car. And that's uh, less by five to 10 times what the other two guys here in the middle on the left, with which they burned through to get the first car. So one of the reasons now you see why, why Lee is growing, of course, the one is their product is great, but they also have a different cost base. So they have a great product at a great price and they were... Uh, let's say resilient to Tesla's price cut, so they can still perform very well at 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 a very good price, still make money out of that, right? Yeah. So these 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 are quite amazing personalities, and I think we also have some some pictures. Or did you want to add something on these three guys, Marco? I don't know. Uh, the only thing, I mean, maybe um, weren't they competitors um, uh, with each others before, especially William and uh, Lee Xiang? Yeah. Wasn't he right. also running internet car platforms? So yeah. they really are very familiar with each other, aren't they? Yeah, they're competitors, but you know, in the tech world, it's different. They're competitors and both friends, right? So especially when you disrupt a traditional industry, you are not a competitor. You're fighting amongst each other. So they're not treating each other so much as a competitor. Yeah? So uh, Li Xiang had a bit auto. Bit auto performed a little bit uh, not as good as Chi Chujit Ya from uh, from Lee Li or Auto Home. But uh, now on the on the car side, I think uh, current trend seems to show that Li Auto might have a chance really to break through. I mean, imagine if they would really um, beat the German brands in China in 2024. I mean, that's unbelievable, right? With, with a startup coming out of nothing and now selling already 28,000 cars uh, per month in China. And they even haven't started to go out of China. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's amazing because, uh, frankly, the picture here is not is not like an exception. It's really how these guys show up, like even at like sort of um, auto fairs and exhibitions where they yeah. go to each other's um, stand and they look at yeah. their models and they chat and they really are friendly. You know, of, of course, they're competitors, but there is this entrepreneurial spirit. And I'm not sure whether like the, the German sort of car executives are hanging out like this in Germany. I mean, you would have very down to like, us, right? And, and very down to earth. So I met all of them personally, casually, very straightforward, not uh, having these kind of, um, oh, I'm the CEO, I'm the founder, I have a lot of money. So they're very down to earth, very approachable, very nice, but also very hardworking and very tough. Um, so it's, I mean, typical Chinese entrepreneurs, I would say. Yeah? And um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's pretty amazing. I mean, this is really worth to talk about. Yeah, this Li Xiang. I mean, um, that's a success story rarely seen before. This is their uh, latest model, the L8. Um, so actually, they launched only one car, one price, one spec when they came out two three years ago, and this was called Li One. 
and uh, then last year they changed basically to three models but it's it's basically the same car they just made a few adjustments on the interior so they have a five seater seven seater six seater and also on the exterior some small adjustment huh? they called it l7 l8 l9 it looks like they have three cars but more or less it's like one big suv just with different configurations and this is very good price right it starts at 300,000 renminbi uh, for such a huge car i mean this is a car with five meter length it's like an, an bmw x5 Fantastic interior space, great design, big uh, wheelbase. Uh, for that price, it's very unique. Huh? And um, so, for example, Toyota Highlander used to, to sell very well in China, this kind of sizable, affordable um, car. But this is clearly premium. Huh? And at, at a premium range for this price, there's nothing else available. Yeah? And um, yeah, so Lee Otto, uh, if you look at the interior, it's very clean. Very clear. This is the six-seater version, uh, very well executed. Yeah, and, and as I said, this Li Xiang himself, he's a product freak, right? He cares about every little detail. Yeah? And, and, and in the beginning, this car, you couldn't choose anything. Just one equipment, the same for everyone, right? And and, and the execution done to the detail was very good. And at the same time, they did it with an amazing cost saving. I mean, imagine this car now selling twenty-eight thousand uh, cars per month. It was developed with an engineering budget. I think it's it's probably one tenth of what BMW or uh, Mercedes would spend for that, right? So uh, it's pretty amazing. And um, yeah, I think when, uh, when you when you look at this, right? I mean, what I always liked about Chinese cars because we were driving like a Honda Odyssey in Beijing back in the day, and and you had like the second row, you had sort of two independent chairs. And in the middle, there was a bit of an alleyway, like a corridor into the back. And my kids loved this, you know, because each one, there was no fighting going on. Um, and they had their sort of independent seats. The two boys were using the first two and then Nyla maybe in the, in the, in the back. And, you know, in Germany, they just don't do that. There's like the second row is always like three seats, like one long bench, yeah. right? And if yeah. you have kids, they just, yeah. there's always this fighting this happening. Is, this is very convenient. I mean, every detail here was gone through with potential customers. With, so not in a traditional market research way, just listening to customer voice. Yeah, And, and this Li Xiang, he himself is a founder of the company. He was involved in signing every single, de single detail of this uh, of this product. Uh, so um, that's that's pretty amazing. And yeah, so um, now because why he said uh, that 2024 they want to beat the German premium brand. So uh, they are launching a couple of new products. And I just found some spy shots. Uh, this is a rumored MPV. Uh, it's a bigger car, even bigger than this uh, uh, SUV we just saw. Uh, more like a Toyota Alpha, where really you can can have the whole family. And this is a car which already people are talking about. It's called L6. It's a bit smaller SUV, more going down towards the Model Y of Tesla. So in both of these cars, now you can see they're already driving prototypes on the road. So um, they're they, they're coming to the market soon. And that's why now they have a lot of confidence. And, and Mirko, the amazing thing is this Li Auto, I believe, same as Tesla, they didn't spend anything on marketing, right? They, they're mm -hmm. selling nearly 30,000 cars. In the first week of June, they're, 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 they're close to outselling the German premium rents without any marketing, right? So this is just good word of mouth. Yeah? The consumer, good consumer feedback. And this brand has become very, very, very hot, very popular without doing any kind of traditional marketing activity. Quick, quick question, Danny. I mean, you're the marketing guy per se. Um, what do you think the chances are? Because I mean, Neo is already in Germany um, and at a couple of European countries. In terms of the branding and the naming, how do you think Li Auto is going to do? Or do you think they will need to rebrand? Uh, yeah, firstly, I, I hope they come to Europe. Um, I think they have good potential. And, and you know, their specialty is they have the range extender. So uh, the current model, it has a much smaller battery than the other guys. That's also why they are cost-wise more competitive. And, um, it, and, and very interesting. So Li Xiang, in, initially it wasn't this car. So initially he designed a small car also intended for Europe. 
right? And then this showed very soon this couldn't work and they failed, they scrapped the whole plan and they relaunched the company. So pretty amazing, yeah? I mean, seeing that you're on the wrong path and then restarting everything completely. I think Lee Auto, I think um, it, it works from my point of view outside of Europe. So it's also on the capital market now has become quite a strong brand. Uh, recently and Neo also works well the only one which has a naming issue in my view is Xiaopong right mm. because the thing in, in German or in English Xpeng uh, it doesn't <laughs> sound well right you always see the jokes that sounds like blowing up a car so uh, it's 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 not not that good huh? um, so yeah this, this because I said Xiaopong right so um, this is the model they launched you saw their declining sales trend and we're going to talk about capital market in a minute, but this is the model they just launched recently, the G6. And this is in terms of dimension is more or less one on one, another Tesla Model Y clone, yeah, a, a mid size SUV, same length, uh, same wheelbase. And this car looks quite good. And um, you, you can see uh, since this was launched already in a few days, they collected 25,000 orders, right? So, and um, so there is some hopes of Xiaopong put on this model. And I think also the capital market has, has reacted quite positively on this. Uh, and by the way, so this model is priced um, around 220,000 renminbi. That's around uh, 15 to 20 percent lower than the tesla model y yeah? so there's really some some potential here uh for this model to compete yeah i think i mean we can we can see uh, the stock market performance right that um the last couple of days here um there's been quite an uptick in the in the stock price for for Xiaopeng, really driven by by those pre pre-order numbers but overall when you look at this then you're right um, going back to sort of almost um, early December, the stock has just moved sideways, right? There's just not a lot of uh, dynamism. And really, in terms of the market cap, where um, Xiaopong is the smallest of the three now, with sort of just 9 billion US dollars in market yeah. cap. In comparison yeah. to Li Alto, I mean, that is pretty amazing. I mean, you go back here to sort of um, late December, right, where they were at around sort of 18, 18 dollars, the share they've gone up almost more like more than 50 percent right so it's quite an incredible um uh, rally that they that they've shown and really um they now at the 32 billion and one has to wonder we're going to look at um uh, neo in a second here right like where are they um and there's just a similarly and uh, not similarly it's just a very poor performance right sort of as of um year to date um early January to now, they went from 9.7 uh, US dollar a share down to now they're at 8.8. .8. So it's basically they're in the red year to date. And in terms of the market cap, yeah. they just said 15, 15 uh, billion dollars. So it's so less of half than what um, the auto is, is showing yeah. currently. Like, how do you like, what is your but, comment on that? Yeah. Yeah, I think you remember, right? I, one or two years ago, these guys were still traded at 30 billion, new, even more than 50 billion at one point of time. That was the time of, of, of wild fantasies. I mean, no one could explain this uh, price with some basics, just simply ba it followed a logic of maybe who is the next Tesla, right? So and yeah. Tesla's valuation was out of this world. But now you can see the capital market after two or three years of operation, these companies, they come back to the fundamentals. I mean, how many cars do you sell? How do your margin looks like, right? And you saw that in the sales figures before, right? I mean, the monthly sales figures for Neo they went down versus last year. You can imagine, I, I haven't seen the margin, but you can imagine the margins must be under huge pressure, pressure due to Tesla's price cuts. So the game yeah. isn't over uh, by far. So if you really want to be successful, you need to continue to grow and you need to be able to, to make money at some point of time. right? So, And, and Xiaopong, the reason why Xiaopong uh, moving sideways and not down is really because they launched this new car. And Lee Auto has, has been growing. And, and in my view, I mean, 30 billion, of course, is a big figure. Uh, but looking at, at the current potential, uh, the current trajectory they're on, I mean, they, they might even have more thought potential, yeah, in my point of view. Yeah, yeah but, very, but it's very... interesting because the only one was this range extender. And it was laughed upon for quite some time. It seems to be working well. 
Um, but it, it seems they will also switch to pure EVs now as the next models, yeah? or at least offer also pure EV versions um, because the range extender might not in all countries enjoy similar subsidies and support as pure electric vehicles. Very quick, um, before we say goodbye for today, Daniel, on a technical level, I'm always interested in, in, in these kind of questions. What is, is, is there a difference between a um, sort of a range extender and a plug-in hybrid? Or is there any sort of technical uh, distinction? Yeah, so the, the range extender, it's a, it's a, it's in principle, it's both a gasoline engine, uh, which, uh, which is still in the, in the car. Um, but uh, the difference is for the range extender, it's much smaller, yeah, and also the tank is much smaller. So it's really uh, um, just 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 minor, yeah, um, and it's a, in a different location. So um, it's still mainly an EV, and then it gets just some recharging of the battery out of this range extender. Um, the plug-in hybrid, really, it's you can imagine more. It's it's in the middle, right? You can have both. Uh, the charging and the battery, and you have your gasoline engine. Um, so yeah, but I think Richang is is right because if you, of course, if you calculate your range, calculate your range with a range extended car, you're 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 beyond one thousand kilometers. Um, wow. Yeah, so that's that's pretty nice, and I think a lot of people like that. Yeah, uh, who are not ready to completely switch to uh, to the pure EV version. Awesome. Thanks, Daniel, for sharing all of this. I think this was um, our first session in, in, in English here on, on China Direct. For our viewers, please leave us comments um, or questions if you like. We will, we're will likely going to pick them up next time around uh, when Hans is going to join us, who is currently traveling on a business trip, um, sorely missed here in the group. Um, but um, we'll be back soon with even more interesting insights from China. This time it was heavy on the EV industry. Thanks again, Daniel, for joining today. Yeah, thanks, Mirko, and thanks to all of you.